Hi, I'm Dan, the editor of War Games Illustrated magazine, and I'd like to take you on a quick tour of the latest issue. So we're talking about this one here. This is the June 2021 issue of the magazine WI402. Now the first thing to mention is that as well as the magazine, you get this free with it. This is a how-to modeling guide. It's a guide to modeling number three, actually. We've done two of these previously, and we're gonna be doing more in the future. It's a collection of articles that have appeared in War Games Illustrated in the past, and it's a great guide to making such things as churches and, um, yeah, that's a medieval church there. We've also got how to build a lich gate and walls. We've got um, explosions. We've got make simple movement trays. So there's loads of stuff going on in there, but that's free with this issue of the magazine. Put that aside to one moment and let's concentrate on the magazine itself. The theme for this issue is a mini theme. It's called Bill Hooks Redux. Pitch, uh, pitchfork and Pillage. So in this magazine, we're revisiting Nevermind the Billhooks, which was a set of rules we gave away with the magazine last year. So it's a medieval set, and we'll tell you more about that as we get into the magazine. Skipping past the first few pages of introduction, we get to our one of our first regular features, Quickfire. Quickfire is a short, short post from WI readers talking about what they've been up to recently. We've got a guide uh, for fixing your Napoleonic muskets if they get broken on your figures. We've got World War II gun emplacements being made by Crichton Long. Uh, then we've got an article here in which Steve Ward tells us about making a hidden ditch for Bill Hooks and a tent for Bill Hooks as well. So that's our first of our Bill Hooks content. Past there, we have observation posts. Observation posts, another regular feature in the magazine in which we look at new and forthcoming war game stuff. The stuff we're looking at this month includes North Star Stargrave crew plastic figures. We've got a new Osprey game, Absolute Emperor, one of the in their Blue Book series. Then we've got some war games, Atlantic Lizard Men, and some great escape games, Dead Man's Hand, Gun Fighters. They're great stuff. The cowboys for Dead Man's Hand, made of plastic. Right, skipping past there, we come to another regular full paper jacket, book previews for the discerning war gamer. Neil Smith will tell you about what you should be reading this month. Then our first article proper, never mind the pitchforks. So this is one of our theme articles. And it's Andy Callan, the author of Nevermind the Bill Hooks, uh, returns to the magazine to tell us about um, revolts and rebellions in the Bill Hooks world. So we, he covers Cade's Rebellion of 1450 and talks about other rebellions and how you bring rebels and, and um, uprisings into the Nevermind the Bill Hooks rules, including the scenario for London Bridge at the end. Then going past those adverts, we get into Building a Vacation Army. Dan Mersey's written this one for us. You know Dan. Dan's the author of uh, Dragon Rampant and Lion Rampant and se several other sets of rules. Now, Dan went on holiday to the Sudan, like you do. And when he came back, he didn't have with him a straw donkey or a cheap bottle of Uzo. He had ideas for building his own war games armies that were uh, active in that region. So he built two historical war games armies based on the Kushites and the Bellamies. So he tells us about that there and talks about how great it is coming back from holiday with ideas for war games armies. Our next article is Chevauchet. Chevauchet has been written by uh, Simon McDowell. Simon McDowell's a big Never Mind the Bill Hooks fan, and he's written about taking the Bill Hooks into the Hundred Years War period, so bringing it forward from the 15th century a bit. Uh, he's some ideas for how you might do that. Uh, kind of linking into Bill Hooks 2, which will be the main release of the rules later this year, but you don't have to know anything about that to appreciate a good article written here about the Hundred Years War and how to game it. Our next article is a designer's notes. It's a designer's notes for Glory 1861. So it's an American Civil War set of rules written by John Sutherland. The, the author himself tells us about the rules, how he went about writing them, why he went about writing them, and some of the unique features of the rules. These rules have a very interesting progression system. So you take your regiment from being green all the way up to being experienced, and how you go about doing that in the game. 
Our next article is an insider insight uh, uh, into Turnip28. Turnip28 is a crazy kitbash kind of thing involving making figures using uh, either Napoleonic figures or medieval figures, sticking them all together and, and creating something very different, very new and actually very easy to create as well because a lot of the Turnip28, a lot of the figures in the Turnip28 universe are plastered in mud and mess and stuff and don't take a lot of painting which is always a bonus. The Turnip28 world is based in a, uh, what do we call it on the cover, post-Napoleonic veg-based apocalypse. Now you can make of that what you will, uh, but um, Max Fitzgerald, who's the guy behind Turnip28, tells you what his ideas for the Turnip28 world are and what his inspirations were. So that's a great uh, article there, introducing you to something that we think might be completely new. Uh, then we're back to the medieval period with this article here, which it talks about the Flemish uh, militia in the medieval period in the 13th, 14th century. So we're introduced to Flemish militia, how they can be used in war games. This is not a Bill Hooks thing at all, it's just in general uh, figures that could be used for the Flemish militia. Uh, we carry on that article in the, in the following magazine after, after actually. The next article up is building a 3D printed windmill. You may, may remember that we featured an article about Winterdine, who are the people who make 3D printed models. Our project manager, James, got hold of one of those models, an enormous windmill, and decided to make it and talks us through the trials and tribulations of making a, a 3D printed model, uh, how to construct the whole thing. The next article, we've got another designer's notes for you, the designer's notes for Clash of Spears. We spoke to the authors of Clash of Spears. Now, Clash of Spears is not new. Often our designer's notes are based on new games. This one's been out a while. But if you recall, at the beginning of the year, Clash of Spears uh, won an award in the War Games Illustrated Awards 2020 for Best New Game. So we thought we'd better get those guys in and talk to them about Clash of Spears. If you've not heard of the game, it's a skirmish level ancients game and the authors tell us uh, more about what the game's all about, introducing, to you, introducing it to you for the first time. Our next article, Too Great a Gamble, Moncom's Advance on Albany. So here we're, we've got a sort of what if for the French and Indian War. Pete Brown introduces us to the idea that uh, Montcalm takes his forces further north than he, he'd ever planned to and what the implications for that are his, were, would have been historical, historically and what the implications could be on the war games table, how you could create Montcalm's advance. So it's nice to have a bit of French Indian War stuff in there, some nice figures of some nice photos of Pete's collection and some ideas for war gaming, a what if within the French and Indian War. Next, vignettes on the tabletop. Neil Williams uh, gives us some ideas to using for using vignettes on the tabletop. Now it's very nice to make a vignette and put it on your shelf, but how do you use them on the tabletop? Neil gives us plenty of ideas for bringing vignettes into wargaming tabletop action, and what they can represent on the tabletop, uh, and ideas for different ways in which you can use them. As I say, not just to look pretty, but also to use them as part of a game. It's a nice one to see, and it's very well decorated with lovely vignettes that we've featured over the years in the magazine. Our last article is a company profile. It's a company profile for studio miniatures. In our company profiles, we like to focus on smaller manufacturers, often one man or one woman bands who are sort of artisan producers of figures and that's um, that's what we're doing here when we talk to uh, Stuart Hamilton from Studio Miniatures. And that's about that. And that's the um, the 108 pages of, of this issue of War Games Illustrated, the June 2021 issue. And don't forget, as well as the magazine itself, you get this free how-to modeling guide. Really hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, War Games Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.